for people that are watching back in the future that are re-watching this. Before we start, um, if you're enjoying this video and my other videos, if you could hit the little like button, that means that the YouTube algorithm shows them to more people, helps me out. And also, um, subscribe to the channel, I make free tutorials every week. So um, hit the subscribe button and you'll get those straight to your inbox. Hit the little bell next to it and then you'll get a notification when I post a new one as well. I try and post a tutorial every Friday and obviously the live stream is on every, every Friday from 5.30pm as well. Um, this week I have released not only a new book but also a new practice aid which is the Folk Friend Practice Diary. Um, I was hoping to have a video showing off how that works out this week but sadly I'm still waiting for my paper copies to arrive in the post. Um, so yeah that'll be out next week but if you want to streamline your practice I've talked a little bit about um, techniques you can use for doing that in the past and I've kind of consolidated all the things that I've worked out over the years and all the things I've seen other great guitarists talk about and quite a lot of bits that I've pinched from um, sports psychologists and entrepreneurs and people like that. Um, so I've used a, a kind of weekly and monthly review system along with a, an events calendar so that you've got definite goals to target uh, and set time frames to do them in. So if you're interested in that, you can find it linked in the description box down below. It's the Folk Friend Practice Diary, available on Amazon and through my website. If you message me directly, you can currently get them cheaper through me than you can on Amazon as well. Um, but that is not going to be a thing for very long because I've only got a few. Um, so if you want one of those, drop me a message or have a look on Amazon in the box down below. And the other thing that's out this week is um, my latest book of arrangements for fingerstyle guitarists. Um, I've arranged 10 classic Irish session tunes, seven of my favourites and three really popular ones, which were um, ones which I thought there would be, you know, a lot of interest in. Um, not that they're not my favourites as well, but um, yeah, anyway. But yeah, um, they are available now as well in paperback and as an ebook. Um, so you can check them out in the box down below. You can have a look through my channel videos as well. You'll find I've played some of them on the past and put them on the channel. Um, that was in the old days before I got my snazzy new camera, which I make my normal videos with. Um, but I will be posting some upgraded clips of those very soon as well. You can find audio examples of them on the um, Folk Friend mailing list and on my re most recent blog. So check out uh, finaleguitar.co.uk forward slash learning and you'll find on the folk section of that you can find more info about it. Um, on the subject, it is in... Ooh. Uh, on the subject of live streams, my plan is to buy a better live streaming camera soon. The reason I've held off on doing it so far is because at the moment I'm reliant on um, mobile data in order to stream. However, um, I'm moving house at the end of the month and I will have a snazzy new internet connection. And so um, from then on, I will have a nice new streaming camera. And so these are going to get a bit more um, high def and bigger and you won't have this board around the outside here. So uh, all that to look forward to. Hey Ed, welcome aboard, thank you for tuning in. Uh, as your, as your, no sign of your mode wheel yet? This, this, this one I posted you, I'd better get there because I had to queue for an hour and a bit outside the post office here because they're all closed because of the coronavirus. There's one solitary post office for the whole, the, this whole end of Sheffield basically at the moment. So there's like my shops um, sort of on an intersection like this and the post office is way over here about um, probably 500 metres down the road and there's a queue from there some days like to my corner. So um, yeah, this one hopefully will be with you. It's track delivery anyway so fingers crossed. For anyone thinking of ordering a mode wheel, by the way, they're very good, um, highly recommend, but um, they are generally very good postage wise. Um, it's just because Edward lives in the USA that I had some problems getting one to him, but we've sorted it out now, I think. Right, I think it is time to get started. Um, so yeah, in today's video, I'm going to be talking about a tune called the Connortman's Rambles. Um, the reason I've picked it is because 
Um, it uses two modes in the same tune, two modes which are related to each other, but two modes nonetheless. Um, I thought that was quite unusual, so it might be a good example, a uh, sort of ear training type tune as well. Um, and it's just a, a good tune, and you hear it a lot, it's played in a lot of sessions. Um, so yeah, I thought it'd be a good one to, to have a look at. What I've done is I've made a tab which you can follow along. So you can, if you want to learn the tune on your guitar, because I had um, a request on my last video for um, running people through how to play a tune on the guitar, so I thought I'd do that. So if you have a look in the description box down below, uh, there's a link to um, a little blog that I wrote which has got the tabs on on there, and you can download them there as well. Um, so grab that, um, get it up, if you can get it, so you can watch this and look at that and switch back and forth between the two, then uh, that's a good idea. But yeah, I'll very quickly to begin with, I'll just run you through how the tune goes. So. So that's the tune. So the um, the theory behind it, it starts out, the first half of it, if you um, have a little listen to it, is very major-y, very happy, um, no complications, no flat seventh, so it's in the Ionian mode. It's all based around this nice, happy D major chord. Hey Pete, welcome aboard. Um, and <laughs> ah, nice. Um, yeah, so it's all based around a D major chord, and that tells you that the tune is in um, D major. Washing up's much better with whiskey. I mean, <laughs> um, yeah. So the tune's in the key of D major or D Ionian, um, and I've got a mode wheel here. This is the original, the first ever one, the prototype one. Um, the actual ones I send out to people are nice wooden ones, but I hang on to my old, my old MDF prototype. I quite like it. Um, so let's just have a look at D Ionian for a minute. There it is, D Ionian. Um, I had a request as well from Yvonne, who said, "Could I please play through the modes?" So let's just quickly do that. Um, I'll play D Ionian. It sounds like this. So Ionian is the first mode, the major, standard major scale. The second mode would be Dorian. So here is D Dorian as an example. So you can hear there, Dorian's a minor sounding mode. Um, compared to the major scale, the third and the seventh are flattened. But the sixth is the same as in the major scale, and that's what makes it the more optimistic of the two Celtic minor modes. Um, the third and fourth modes, Feridian, Phrygian, and Lydian, are not used in Celtic music, so I'm going to leave them out. Fifth mode is Mixolydian, which is like this. is like a major scale but the seventh note is flattened which gives it a kind of bluesy cheeky jazzy kind of flavor my favorite mode and the last one is aeolian which is very much like dorian and a lot of people struggle to tell them apart but the difference is just the sixth note is flattened in aeolian which makes it the more miserable of the two minor modes that's the sixth Yeah, so that's those. 
when I talk about modes with numbers, um, in fact, I'm going to actually write the numbers on my mode wheel because that will probably make your lives easier. Um, so, yeah, the modes in order. Um, if you take the intervals of a major scale and you start and finish from a different note within that major scale, what you'll hear is one of the modes, depending which, um, which degree of the scale you start from, starting from whichever note you start from. So if you start from one and you just play a major scale, you've got D Ionian if we're starting on D. If you start from E, second note in a D scale, and you play those exact same notes, what you hear is an E Dorian scale. Uh, to write the three really small there. Um, F sharp you'd hear Phrygian, for G you'd hear Lydian. I'm blasting through all this stuff because I've covered it in previous videos and I don't want to spend the whole video waffling about it. Um, if you don't know what I'm on about, have a look in the box down below. I've made several videos and a blog which cover how all this stuff works. Um, honestly, it's the most useful bit of folk info, um, understanding how the modes work for lots of reasons. But anyway, so um, no worries, Yvonne. I'm glad. Uh, I hope it's helpful. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so this tune starts in D Ionian. Um, and in the second half, it switches to B minor. And it's like a B minor scale. And it's got the. Uh, it's what classical people would call B natural minor, aka flat three, flat six, and flat seven. So that is B Aeolian not Dorian. Um, now, if you follow around on my mode wheel here, there's our starting mode, D Ionian, and the sixth one that I would be able to make out of the notes from the D Ionian scale, I've just noticed it's mirrored on here, isn't it? Sorry about that. I'm not, um, I'm not back to front or dyslexic or anything. It's, it's, the video has been flipped. Um, but yeah, so the sixth mode is B Aeolian. And that means that B Aeolian, if I play B Aeolian, uh, B Aeolian starts on B here, and it goes... Like that. Those notes are the same notes that are in D major. So if I play using the same shape... If you imagine that's the sixth degree of a B of a D major scale, six, seven, eight, and eight is the same as one. So there's D, and if I'm going to play all the same notes that I played in my B Aeolian shape, except that now I'm going to start from D, and I'm going to carry on. So that's a D scale, and it's all the same notes. Now, with this tune, the first part is in D major, D Ionian, and the second part is in B Aeolian. And I've just told you they've got the same notes in, so you might be thinking, what's the difference then if they're the same notes? Well, the difference is, um, the B part of this tune... I can play it up there. starts like that. Um, so what you've got there note-wise is um, F sharp going up to B, then F sharp going up to um, A, um, and then another little phrase starting with an F sharp um, that F sharp is the fifth compared to B. So B, C, D, E, F sharp. Um, it's the fifth note in a B minor scale. And you've got lots of Bs. So what your ear does is it hears, well, I haven't heard a single D in the last three, uh, four bars. But I've heard lots of Bs, and I've heard lots of other notes that are closely related to B minor, 
Um, the fifth is the, the, the second most consonant interval in any scale. So if you hear the fifth and the root of, of one scale, lots and lots, your ear is going to go, ah, I must, must have switched. So it hears that section as being much more B minor-y. Um, and if I play on a little bit through it, um, that last note of the B part, um, that is B. <laughs> and you can always tell, well, I say always, Obviously, someone's going to come up with an example where it doesn't do it, but almost always you can tell what key something is in because the last note of a section is going to be the key note. So that's how you tell which of two related modes you're in. Your ear is working on a rule of averages, and if it hears a lot more notes that are closely related to one key centre, rather than another one with the same notes in it, it'll assume that that is the key. So in this case, we're hearing a lot of notes that are in a B minor chord, aka um, B, D and F sharp. We're hearing those notes on a lot of the dominant bits, the dominant beats of um, the B part. And in the A part, we're hearing a lot of like D, F sharp and A, because those are the um, notes of a, a D major chord. And the A part ends on D, and the B part ends on B. That's how you can tell that it's changed. Right, so that's that's quite enough music theory um, for for now. Um, let's have a look at playing the tune. So, if you look in the blog down below, one of the things I've linked is um, a list of all the mode shapes. And the mode shape that we're going to use is the B Aeolian. So you get the Aeolian shape, which is on that diagram, and you move it so that the lowest pitched note in the whole thing, which as you look at the diagram will be at the top on the left, you put that note with your index finger on the seventh fret, and that enables you to play through the B Aeolian shape so by going um, seven, so uh, yeah, sorry, yeah, seven, nine, ten, and then on the A string, seven, nine, ten, and then on the D string, seven, nine, then on the G string, you've got six, so you have to move your index finger back one, seven, nine. Then you move your index finger back up to where it was before. On the B string you do 7, 8, 10. And then the top string is another E string, same as the bottom string was. So with any um, scale shape that you're trying to learn, the top string is always going to be the same as the bottom string was. So there's your root note again, B, and if you want you can go on the extra two. So I'll just play through the whole shape again. Um, just quickly, the reason I've elected to play it up here with this shape rather than down the bottom, because um, I could play it in sort of root position like this, for example. Something like that. Um, the reason I've elected to play it up here is just to give you a bit of an insight into the relationships between the mode shapes and hopefully that will kind of, for people that haven't learned those before, that might give you something really, really useful to, to work with. Um, yeah. Anyway, um, where are we up to? Let's, um, does everybody who's trying to play along 
have some sort of degree of familiarity with that shape already or do you want a little while just to have a little run through that B minor shape or shall we just carry on and you can go back and have a look at that in the future at some point any thoughts If I sit like this, I look like I've got a little ant antenna. <laughs> Receiving transmissions. <laughs> okay, well, I'm just going to carry on. So, um, um, yeah, let's have a look at the tune. So, um, I won't go into too much detail. I'll just play a little short section and you can try and work it out. All the notes are going to be from within that shape. Yeah, I will. Yeah. All the notes are going to be from within that shape. So it starts on a uh, little finger on the 10th uh, fret of the bottom string. And it goes... So that's the first little bit and you can follow along on the tab and check out what the fret numbers are and which strings they're on. That'll be a lot easier than me saying it you know so the first um first bar and the little upbeat that precedes it is and the best way to do that part is to flatten your finger so once you get up to there uh, and you get onto the ninth fret of the d string flatten your index finger so that it's mini barring across the top four and that means that you can fret it and the G string at the same time. Then what you want to do after that is use keep your mini bar on for the second bar. Use your third finger to go um, 979. Nine. Then you've still got your little mini bar on. Um, so that's that bit. To your little finger on the tenth of the A string. Then it does the first two bars again, except that at this point, maintaining your mini bar, you go. So that bit is. That. And then um, bar four of the A part is. And then it does more or less the same thing again, except that it's going to change at the end. So, here it just goes up the shape for a couple of notes. And then you've got this bit at the end of the A part, um, first time through, which goes... So the main kind of um, thing to bear in mind is that throughout the vast majority of this, it is in your interests to maintain that little mini bar across the top four strings with your index finger. And that means that you can um, just kind of waggle the other two fingers. Um, it also means that you can keep um, lower notes ringing out when the tune gets higher which is a kind of general principle of um, making tunes played on the guitar sound nice. The more, If the tune is going upwards, leave the notes below it ringing out as much as possible, um, unless the chord has changed, because that's going to kind of fill out the sound and make it not just sound like just a melody, but a melody with some kind of harmonic elements added as well. Anyway, so here's that A part again from the start.
Um, then it does it all again, it repeats. Um, and the only difference is that the second time it does that, it goes... and adds one little extra note at the end of the bar, which leads you into the B part. Um, yeah, so that's that. The B part then, you still want to keep your mini bar down. And it's like that, that's the first little phrase. So you can see there, I'm keeping the mini bar down and I'm just adding either that finger or that finger. That finger, if it's a uh, little finger, if it's the 10th fret, and ring finger if it's the ninth fret. Um, does that bit again, except slightly different. Then it does it again. And then it uses the little ending phrase, the same as was in the A part. And this is where it makes it clear that it's leading from B minor back into um, D major, B Aeolian back into D Ionian, because it goes just at the very end of the B part on the second time it gets to that last bar it goes does this nice little run down back to um g there and the a part starts again from f sharp which is the third the major third relative to to d major so that's your little run down there's your f sharp and then you're back into kind of thing. So that's that, that's um, how to play the tune using just the B Aeolian mode shape. Um, that's one of the things that the mode shapes are uh, useful for. This is one of the several reasons why I say they're really worth learning. Um, they're useful for so many other things, lots of things that don't really become clear until you've spent the time learning them as well. But you'll find, I mean, aside from anything else, they're a good coordination exercise. They improve your finger strength. You can see within the mode shapes the notes of a chord, and that will help you memorise how to construct more interesting chords, um, which is a really useful technique in itself. So, like, for example, if I'm playing in D Ionian here, I ended up with this little rundown look. And if I put my root note there with my little finger, um, I've got D, F sharp, and A, and that's my D major chord. And those are all from that shape. So playing through these scales um, is a really good way of getting your ears used to working out intervals. Um, I've talked a bit in the past about ear training exercises you can do with them. Again, I'm going to stop talking about it now. Um, what's next? Let's have a little look at the chords for this tune then, because it's got this A part that's in D and a B part that's in B minor, so we're going to have to reflect that in our backing. Um, I've actually made um, a list of the chords, and I've put it up on the wall. So I'll just move my camera over here a little bit. Hopefully, you'll be able to see it. Um, can everybody read that okay? It's, it's too small still. Move it up a little bit. There. Um, let's just have a look at the chords quickly. So we've got the tune kind of goes do do, boo do 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 do. Um, so your root is here. Root second third, that's the major third. Third fifth fifth root fifth fifth. 
Um, so those are all very, very D major-y sounding notes. You've got all three of the notes of a D major chord in your first bar. So da 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 da. So that's very straightforward D major. That's your first bar. Um, second bar goes da 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 da. Um, because it starts on a long B, um, there's no B in a D major chord, but there is a B in a G chord, chord 4. So my ear has gone, oh, it sounds chord 4 y because it's got a long note which is from chord 4 at the start of it. Hence, I've put chord 4 there. You don't need, as I'm always saying, to necessarily know that it's a long B and think about whether there's a B in chord 4. What you need to do is just listen to it and go, it doesn't sound very chord 1 y. If you play a chord 1 under this, Da, 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 da. It kind of sounds a bit like, you know, not as good as. Da, 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 da. Um, so I'm running you through like how the notes define what chords are there, but really you want to trust your ears when it comes to this to begin with anyway. Um, it's much better to get used to doing it by ear than it is to think too much about what notes are in things or rely on looking at the sheet music to work out chords. Anyway, um, so we've got do 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 do. Then it does the first bit again, so that's the same chord one. Do 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 do. Now this bit here, this is your seventh foot tap, which I say in every video that um, that needs to be chord five. But this tune is very unusual in that it goes um, do 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 do. It goes. D, B, 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 A, G. So it's got lots and lots of B and lots and lots of A. Um, B is very, very chord 4 -y. Um, And then there's a little bit of A and then a little bit of G at the end. So it's not really very chord, chord 5 -y. It's got an A in it, but only for, a, for one quaver. Um, and it's not very chord 1-y either. It's not like resolving back to chord 1 at the end. There's no D at the end of the section, as you'd expect there, because um, it ends on a G, which is a chord 4 chord. So because the section begins on a B, uh, sorry, because the bar begins on a B and ends on a G, I've put chord 4 there, even though it, traditionally it would normally be chord 1. But this tune just doesn't do that, um, which is very unusual for an Irish tune. But... The second time you go through, it does do A at the end. Um, so that is standard chord five nus, as you'd expect. Um, so then the second time through the B part, da 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 Then you've got this bit, da 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 Begins on a G. Um, it's got a very long G. It's got a long, long G at the beginning of the bar there. So it sounds chord 4 e, so I put chord 4 there. And then it goes da 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 da. Um, and I have put chord 5 there just to round it off and make it sound finished because it's the end of a section and that's what you always do at the end of sections. Um, so yeah, that's that. Um, the B part then, as I've said, it starts with um, um, B minor's 5 note, which is F sharp, going up to a B. Sounds very B binary, so I've put B minor there. That bit's very B binary as well. That's your seventh foot tap, so I've put um, an A major there. Um, it could have been that I put F sharp minor there because that's chord five related to B minor. Um, if you're in a minor key, you can use chord fives related major as well if you want to. So I've put A there instead. Either or, um, if you're in if you're in a minor key, it's interchangeable whether you use chord five or chord seven at the end of a section. Um, I've just I just so happened to have plumped for A, but F sharp minor would have been fine as well. Um, the reason that I plumped for A, incidentally, is because it goes. B A uh, oh sorry F sharp E D E um, and F sharp um, E well it ends on a long E 
um, there's an E note in an A chord, but there's no E note in an F sharp chord. And that's why I picked A instead of F sharp minor. But um, either, either would be functionally fine. But anyway, um, then second part of the B part. Do, 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 Then da, 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 da. That's the same little phrase as the end of the A part. So I've used the same chords. That's it. And that's it. So that's our, our simple chords. Um, what I'm going to do now, just so you can hear what that sounds like and how it fits, I'm going to use Duncan Cameron's recording of the tune. And I'm going to just play the simple chords along with it. Thank you very much to Duncan Cameron, who um, very kindly said I could use this clip in this video. Um, if you want good quality slow recordings of tunes on a violin, fiddle, um, he plays really nicely and he's done some really nice tune recordings. They're great for practicing along with. Go and check out his channel, Duncan Cameron Music. Um, anyway. Oh, well, there'll be a short break while I retune to his fiddle. I wondered why my guitar was tuned sharp before. So once you've used your ears to break down the tune into chords 1, 4 and 5 and put them in the right places, um, the next thing you can start doing is maybe the second or third time through the tune, you might want to add some um, harmonic variation. And I'm just going to very quickly run through the kind of first level of that using just related minors, related, um, related majors, and then using the um, chords which are related in the other direction which I am afraid have still not come up with a catchy title for yet. Um, somebody I teach actually came up with a really good name for them last week and I've completely forgotten what it was. Um, so I'll have to ask her and I'll get back to you next week. Anyway, um, so the first type of substitution you can always do is if you've got a major chord, um, swap it to its related minor chord. And I can show you this on the mode wheel. If you're major chord, let's say it was D, is 1, then your minor chord is always 6. So you go through the alphabet, uh, D, E, F sharp, because we're in D major, G, A, B minor, that's your 6 chord. And B minor, see it's here with a 6 on it, B minor, that is um, related to D major because it contains two notes in common, and then they have one note each of their own. Um, so, any time where I'm playing D and I get bored of it, I can switch to B minor. So I am going to take my... Oh, I've written it here as well. D switches to B minor. That's its related minor. Um, and the related minor is always... Um, well, if, if, your, if your major chord is 1, then your related minor is the 6th one you get to as you go through the, the notes of the scale. Um, so, 
I'm not going to change out the first chord here because um, people need to know what key they're in at the start of the tune. And especially with this tune, because there's been a key change, you need to make it clear that you've changed back. So you kind of need to leave the D at the beginning alone. Um, so I'm going to leave that where it is. Diddly, 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 diddly. But to make the tune tell a bit more of a story, it could be like, everything was good. I went to the park and <gasps> but then I came home and my house was on fire, you know, so you can you can make the second D a B minor just to make a bit of a variation. So I'll put B minor there. I'm gonna switch out that D to its related minor. So then we'll have du, 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 du. and um B minor down to G, I've explained this in more detail in my book um, backing guitar techniques for traditional Celtic music but B minor down to G is a very weak chord progression the reason being that G is made up of the notes G B and D B minor is made up of B D and F sharp and if you play two chords next to each other that contain lots of the same notes it's a bit like uh what was the point of that? You know, you could have just stayed where you were for all this effect that it had. So I'm not going to do B back to G. I'm going to put my A chord there in. Because it's the seventh foot tap, I can do that. So I'm going to put my A back in if I'm putting B minor there. Uh, just sounds... Oh, just wait for the connection. You'll hear when I play it, it just sounds nicer. So here is... Um, I'll play it as if I'd left the G in there. So you'd have... I mean it's all right um but personally I just don't like doing that I always think it sounds a bit like like it it was beginning to tell a story and then it gave up you know so um after I add the tension with the B minor chord, I'm going to resolve the tension using chord 5 back to chord 1. And that makes a much more finished sounding story rather than the story that you tell by going um, happy chord, happy chord 4, minor chord for tension, back to where we just were. You know, that's like something bad happened. Anyway, I was talking about this, you know, the, the listeners like, where's the rest of the, the tale of woe? Anyway, um, so this is what it sounds like with chord five. And then your chord five leads you back nicely to, to chord one at the start to resolve that tension that you made by doing the, uh, the minor substitution there. Um, let's stick some more related minors in. So we've got... Da, 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 da. Here we've got two bars of G in a row, and I think that's a bit dull. So um, I'm going to switch G to its related minor as well. And G's related minor is E minor because um, if G is one on my little finger, G, A, B, C, D, E minor is the sixth one. So, if I get rid of this G here, and I put an E minor there, then we get the second half of, well, the um, fifth to eighth bars of the A part sounding like this. So that's quite nice, just makes a bit of variation. Um, I could also have put... Um, E minor there if I wanted to, or I could make them both E minor, that would be fine as well. Um, so it doesn't matter where you do these substitutions, really, uh, they're always valid. But I've just elected to do it there, because why not? <laughs> um, right then, in the B part, we've got this massive block of B minor here. Um, I'm going to talk about um, two types of substitution that you could do for this. So one is a minor chord can switch to its related my major, um, which is the exact same thing that we just did, but in reverse. So the minor chord, you're going to imagine that the minor chord is the sixth one, and you're going to count back until you get to one. Um, 
an easier way of doing that. So here's my B minor chord on the sixth there, B minor. An easier way of doing that is to go forward two steps in the scale. So B, C sharp, D major. That's the same thing as counting back um, from the sixth back to the first. So that would be like B, A, G, F sharp, E, D. But it's, like I say, it's easier to go two forward. Um, so with this B minor chord, I could switch it to its related major, which is D major. But I'm not going to do that because the key change is really nice because it adds, um, it makes everything go dark and that makes a nice change, you know. Um, and to switch it back to D major straight away kind of spoils that and kind of makes the key change less definite. And also the, the sound of these chords is very definitely, uh, the sound of the notes in the melody for this B part is very definitely uh, B minor-y sounding. So to stick a D in it would kind of be an insult to it, really. Um, there is another type of substitution that you can do, however. Um, so as well as going, if you're talking about a major chord, you if you go two steps back down the scale, you find it's related minor. You can also substitute it for the chord that's two forward from it. So that's for a major chord. So in the case of D major, um, I could play B minor instead, or I could go two steps forward from D major, which would take me D major E up to F sharp minor. So F sharp minor would be a valid substitute for D major as well, because it also contains um, two notes in common with the chord. If um, we're talking about a minor chord like B minor here, We've said that B minor has a related major, which is two steps forward from it, and that is D major. And B minor also has a chord two steps back from it, which contains two notes in common with it as well. So I can swap my B minor, which is here on number six, to G major, the four chord. So where I've been playing B minor for a bit, I can stick a G in if I want to. And what I'm going to do is get rid of the second one and put a G there. G. Uh. <laughs> so I'm going to play B minor, B minor, G, G. Then I'm going to go back to B minor just because I like to change chords every bar. Um, nothing more to it than that. You could play B minor there again if you wanted to. Or if you really wanted to, you could play D. Um, then A for chord seven uh, for the seventh foot tap. So you've got to have you've got to have A there. Um, then here I'm going to put my G in again because I did it last time, so I want it to be symmetrical. Da, 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 da. G G. This G I'm going to switch to its um, related minor, which is E minor. So put an E minor there and um, E minor up to A is going to be nice and then A back to D is going to be a nice end to it. The last thing I'll say about this chord progression is this last little phrase here, E minor to A back to D, sounds more finished than G back to A back to D would have done. If I play them both you'll hear what I mean. So here's G So that's, that's all right, but E minor, A, back to D, that's more finished. And that's because minor chords, by dint of being sad, are more tense than major chords are. Um, so your minor chord, your E minor there, wants to resolve to something. And when you take, when you go down a fifth or up a fourth, uh, it resolves the tension. So E minor up to A is up a fifth, E, F sharp, G. Uh, sorry, it's down a fifth, which is up a fourth. So E, F sharp, G, A, so up a fourth. Um, and then A up to D is down a fifth or up a fourth as well, because A, B, C sharp, D. So you've got two resolutions in fifths there, and that's a progression that your ear is very familiar with and likes the sound of. And it resolves the tension created by the minor chord, thus making the progression sound more satisfying than G to A to D. 
Um, anyway, yeah, so I'm going to play this revised B part along with the tune just so you can hear what it sounds like. And then I'm afraid I'm going to have to go because my battery is um, <laughs> on its way out. Um, like I say, hopefully I won't have problems like these in a couple of weeks because I'll have a nice new camera and a snazzy new streaming setup. Anyway. Oh, I'll just wind him back into the A part a bit so you can hear the leading. So here comes the B part. Actually, as a very last thing for this, um, for people who are looking, who are, once you've had a little go to, um, had a little while to practice playing along. Sorry about that. How long have I been muted for? <laughs> oh dear. Oh dear. Oh, sorry about that. Anyway, what I was what I was trying to say was I'm going to very quickly do a little run through um, just with all the chords used, just so you can have an idea of some other things that you could try. You can play the video back once I finish streaming it, and you'll be able to play it in slow motion, and maybe it'll give you some ideas for other possible chord progressions. And then probably my battery's going to die, so I'll say goodbye to you all now. Um, but yeah, thank you all very much for tuning in anyway, and I will see you again uh, next Friday from 5.30. And you can um, have a look in the box down below as well. Next week's episode is already linked. Um, hit the little get reminder, set reminder button and the little bell, and that way it'll tell you when we start. Right. I link the fiddle player channel yes i can um i'll do that in just a second he's called duncan cameron um uh, 
copy link. Here we go. There you are. Look, that's Duncan Cameron's channel for um, the fiddle recordings, and he's got loads of stuff on there as well. Um, yeah, so check that out. Well worth a look. But yeah. If anybody's got any great ideas for what they would like to see covered next week, um, I'm going to be talking a little bit more about um, the Practice Diary, which is my new invention, which is now out as well, by the way. Um, if you would like to streamline your guitar practice, I've kind of compiled all the best ways I could think of to do that and made um, a Practice Diary, which works on like a month-by-month -month format with monthly and weekly reviews. Um, so go and check that out, that's linked in the box down below. I'll be talking a little bit about that next week and how it works um, and just some general things to make you more efficient with practicing. But if there's anything particular you'd like to know about next week, um, drop me a message, leave me a comment, anything like that, or email um, info at finaleguitar.co.uk um, and I'll be back on next Friday from 5.30. So, uh, yeah, thank you very much for watching. Hit the like button if you haven't already. Hit the subscribe, and I will see you all very soon for more videos. Won't let me end the stream. <laughs> That's it now. I'm going to have to stream forever. Come on, phone. There we go. Cheers, guys.